This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether it's your new profession or just a lifelong passion, start your journey to website glory with Squarespace. Check out their amazing all-in-one platform through the link in the description below. More on them in a bit. It's our first geographic subject that might not even exist. On the fringes of our solar system, way beyond the realm of Neptune, there may lie a distant, frozen world. First hypothesized in a 2016 paper as a way of accounting for the irregular orbit of six trans-Neptunian objects, this mysterious planet could be up to five times the mass of Earth. To the researchers who first suggested its existence, it's known as Planet Nine, but it also goes by another name, one that's been in use for over a century, Planet X. The idea of a hidden planet beyond Neptune was first floated in the 1840s as a way of explaining a wobble in the orbit of the ice giants. Since then, the idea has refused to die. But rather than just being a piece of quackery, this unproved theory has led to real breakthroughs. The discovery of Pluto, of hundreds of brown dwarf stars, and our solar system's most distant object are all thanks to Planet X. Today we're diving into both the arguments for a hidden ninth planet and witnessing how the search for it transformed astronomy. It was September 30th, 1846, when the world first heard of Urbain Le Verrier's hypothetical planet. A French astronomer, Le Verrier was, at that point, the hottest property in all of science. Back in 1845, had begun a series of calculations that seemed to prove an eighth planet lay on the fringes of our solar system beyond Uranus. Just the week before, it handed the coordinates of this undetected planet to German astronomer Johann G. Gall. Gall had then spotted Neptune within his first hour of searching. And now, here Le Verrier was, exactly seven days after adding a whole new planet to solar system models, proclaiming that there must be yet another world even more distant than Neptune. Over the following decades, this hypothetical world would go by many names, Planet Q, Planet Hades, but the one that would eventually stick would be Planet X. The story of how a possibly non-existent planet came to exert such a pull over human imagination begins way, way back in 1781. That was the year astronomer William Herschel appended everything we thought we knew about the solar system by discovering Uranus. And yes, totally okay if you snigger at the word Uranus. If they didn't want future folk laughing, they wouldn't have called it that. In fact, they would have gone with Herschel's original name of Georgium Sidus. Anyway, the discovery of Planet 7 was a game changer. Up to this point in history, everyone had been all like, eh, number of planets, easy, it's six. We've known that since the ancient times, all right? But then Herschel came along and blew all of that up, leading people to wonder, what if there were more planets up there? The mad search that followed was marked by false starts, such as the 1801 discovery of Ceres, now classified as a dwarf planet. But while Ceres was always controversial, Le Verrier's 1846 discovery of Neptune finally proved, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Uranus wasn't the solar system's only mystery. So when Le Verrier announced shortly after that he suspected another unseen planet was lurking out there, the hunt for Planet X was on. But while Le Verrier was looking beyond Neptune, others were looking for this hidden planet closer to home. In the 1850s, wobbles in Mercury's orbit led heaps of science dudes to assume the next missing planet must lie much closer to home. French doctor Edmond Lescarbot even claimed it glimpsed the mysterious world transiting across the sun. Known as Vulcan, this hypothetical first planet would eventually turn out to be a big nothing burger, but the search for it would inspire more than just Gene Roddenberry. See, Newtonian theories of gravity could only explain Mercury's weird wobble by conjuring another planet. This was so widely accepted that the New York Times declared in 1876, Vulcan exists and its existence can no longer be denied or ignored. Vulcans never bluff. When Albert Einstein came along with his theory of general relativity, he was able to use that wobble to prove Vulcan's non-existence. Einstein's work suggested the Sun was so massive that it curved space-time, something that would account for Mercury's weird orbit. When he did the math, the results came out perfect. By disproving Vulcan, Einstein had proved beyond all doubt his most famous theory. In other words, the search for our solar system's missing planet helped one of the greatest physics breakthroughs of all time. But while Le Verrier was a supporter of the Vulcan hypothesis, the planet he was searching for was much, much further away. By now, evidence was mounting at least one more planet existed beyond Neptune, and the hunt for it was about to produce some spectacular results.
You have to pity poor Count Oscar Reichenbach. Aside from having a name that sounds like a villain Sherlock Holmes punches off a waterfall, the Count suffered serious astronomical paranoia. In 1875, he publicly accused Leverrier of discovering and then hiding the existence of two trans-Neptunian planets from the general public. It was one of history's first examples of the mad conspiracy theories that would soon swirl around Planet X. And it absolutely wasn't going to be the last. As the 19th century drew to a close, the irregular orbit of distant comets was causing speculation about the secret world to reach fever pitch. William Henry Pickering, discoverer of one of Saturn's moons, declared Planet Q must be at least 63 times the size of Jupiter, effectively the mass of a star. In Germany, Theodore Griegel hypothesized a hellish world that he called Hades, while American Thomas Jefferson Jackson C. thought an ocean planet lay just out of sight. But in the end, it would be a different America. American eccentric who had the greatest impact on the search for Planet X. Born in 1855, Percival Lowell is one of the most fascinating figures in science history. A crackpot who sincerely believed in Martians, Lowell was also rich enough to spend insane sums trying to prove his nutty theories right. At the turn of the century, he built his own observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, specifically for confirming the disproved theory of canals on Mars. When that failed, he wasn't all like, gee, don't I look stupid, better stop believing in crazy sh**. Instead, he turned his attention to finding Leverrier's missing world. In 1906, Lau noted that Neptune had an irregular orbit, one he felt could only be caused by an undiscovered ice giant. Giving it the name Planet X, he calculated exactly where it should be visible in the night sky. The crazy part? Lau would later be shown to have messed up his calculations, effectively creating a fake treasure map leading nowhere. Yet somehow this mathematical nonsense would still lead to one of America's great discoveries. In 1916, Lau died, broken by his hunt for Planet X. He left behind a vast fortune for his observatory to continue searching using his calculations. After a long legal battle with his widow, the hunt resumed in the late 1920s. Looking for someone to do the grunt work, the observatory hired a gangly Midwest farm boy for a passion for building his own telescopes out of spare Buick parts. In 1928, 22-year-old Clyde Tombaugh became the one tasked with photographing the night sky to locate Lowell's world. From Earth, planets even seen through telescopes look just like little dots, little white dots in a sea of stars that also look like dots. Locating them requires taking multiple photographs of the night sky, then comparing them. In still photos, the planets appear to move while the stars stay still. In the 1920s, all this had to be done by hand. That meant tedious, fiddly work setting up cameras, then scanning plates by eye. But the rewards could be great. On February the 18th, 1930, Tombar noticed that telltale movement on a pair of plates, a new planet exactly where Lau had predicted it would be. Announced on the 13th of March, Tombar's discovery was a breakthrough, the first discovery of a planet in nearly 90 years. But it wouldn't be long before the world realized something was wrong. The world Tombar named Pluto was too small to be Lau's Planet X, too small to be the monster predicted by Leverrier all those years ago. Although Pluto was declared the ninth planet, that meant the hunts were still on. No longer did the X in Planet X just stand for unknown. Now it also represented the Roman numeral for Planet 10. As the 20th century progressed, hopes for finding the missing planet began to slowly dim, fading away like a small, dying star. After he realized Pluto's tiny mass meant it wasn't what he'd been searching for, Clyde Tombaugh spent another decade and a half scanning the skies. In that time, he found over 700 new asteroids, several galaxy clusters, at least one new comet, and examined images containing maybe 30 million stars. But he never found the missing planet. Pluto had been an anomaly, an insane fluke that just happened to be in the area that Lowell had said Planet X would be. By the time Tombaugh finished his search, he was convinced that there were no more planets hiding in our solar system. Yet the idea didn't entirely die with Tom Bell's enthusiasm. For the next few decades, whenever something unexplained cropped up in the data, some researcher would immediately claim that it could be Planet X. Basically, Planet X in the mid-20th century was the respectable equivalent of, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. Something invoked any time we lacked an explanation for something. Sometimes it came with minor twists, like the theory of Nemesis. Suggested in 1984, Nemesis wasn't a hidden planet, but a hidden star, a red or brown dwarf, hiding right on the fringes of our solar system 1.5 light years away. Originally proposed as a way of explaining the history of mass extinctions on Earth, said to be caused by Nemesis disrupting objects in the Oort cloud and hurling them towards the inner solar system on a 27 
million year cycle, the theory had a brief run of popularity. It helped that observations showed most stars like our Sun exist in binary systems, suggesting ours should too. But the idea of Nemesis eventually died when a NASA survey of the night sky turned up hundreds of previously invisible brown dwarves, but none in our solar system. Still, Nemesis at least was scientifically plausible. The same can't be said for the most famous Planet X theory of them all. Nibiru is one of those names you probably encountered floating around the internet, usually linked to balls out craziness. First conceived by Zechariah Sitchin in 1976, the Nibiru theory takes the idea of a hidden planet and runs with it all the way out of science and well into science fiction. The basic idea is that Nibiru is an advanced planet that swings through the inner solar system every few thousand years, at which point it's an inhabitants come to our world to do creepy stuff. That's pretty much a rip-off of 1966 Doctor Who serial The Tenth Planet, in which the hidden planet Mondas brings the Cybermen to Earth for the first time. Needless to say, the Nibiru theory is even less scientific than that. By the last decade of the 20th century, it looked like Le Verrier's planet had been disproven once and for all. When Voyager 2 visited Neptune in 1989, it managed to get an accurate reading of its mass for the first time. To everyone's shock, it turned out that the planet was about 2% heavier than expected. When scientists ran these revised figures, the supposed wobble in the ice giant's orbit melted away like snow in the Sahara. That was it. Final proof that there was no mysterious object out there tugging on our solar system with the force of its gravity. At least, that's what everyone assumed, because in a little over a decade, some new questions were about to crop up. New questions that would once again revive Planet X. This time, it would be harder to ignore than before. Now, if you're looking to create something that's hard to ignore, you're probably going to need a little bit of help from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. And you know what's great about the summer? Vacation, time off, a little bit of R&R. &R. It's the perfect time to spend laying on the beach or in the park, daydreaming about that next project that you want to start. Fortunately, Squarespace gives you every possible tool you might want to make your dream into a reality. Whether it's a small business, a sports blog, a creative portfolio, or just a page full of dank memes, it doesn't matter. If you can dream it, you can build it with Squarespace. Are you looking to get in and out quick without thinking too much about what your website should look like? Well, use one of their quick and beautiful templates to make a website that's fresh and for you. Or maybe you're more of a hands-on person, you've got ideas about what exactly your site should look like. Well, Squarespace gives you all the customization options you could ever want, with no updates, no patches, no technical BS to worry about. Once you're done setting up your website, tinkering with the design if you're so inclined, or maybe just playing with the colors, there are so many extra features that Squarespace provides so that your website can thrive. Email campaigns, patronage portals, social integrations, member-only areas, analytics, commercial options, 24-7 customer support. Everything you think you could need is in one place. So when you're ready to get started on the next project of yours, big or small, if it involves a website, it's got to be with Squarespace. Right now, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash geographics to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now let's get back to space. In late 2003, Caltech astronomer Mike Brown discovered something very weird. Along with his team, Brown had spent the last few years chasing trans-Neptunian objects, or TNOs, those marvelous chunks of rock that exist beyond the eighth planet. It was an exciting time to be in the game. Over the next couple of years, Brown's team would discover the dwarf planets Makamake and Haumea, along with controversial Eris. Controversial because Eris would turn out to have nearly the same mass as Pluto. It would be because of that that in 2006, the International Astronomical Union Union voted to demote Pluto to dwarf planet. But while Eris would have the biggest short-term impact, it's the object Brown discovered in late 2003 that might be the most important of all. Sedna is an extremely weird TNO, a possible dwarf planet with an orbit so eccentric it simply shouldn't exist. At its closest, it comes within 76 AU of the Sun, with 1 AU being equivalent of the distance between the Sun and the Earth. For comparison, Neptune orbits on average at 30 AU, while Pluto has an average distance of nearly 40. In other words, Sedna at its closest is damn far away, but that's not the strangest part. The strangest part is how unbelievably far its most distant point is. 975 AU. So, so far beyond Neptune that it's like the distance between you popping to your local corner store and flying to Mongolia. As Brown noted not long after its discovery, Sedna shouldn't be there. It never comes close enough to be affected by the sun, but it never goes far enough away from the sun to be affected by other stars. All of which raised an interesting question. What the hell was keeping Sedna in its weird orbit. In 2016, Brown and his colleague Konstantin Batagin answered with a bombshell paper. 
By this point, five more TNOs had been located in the region of Sedna, all of which seemed to have similar characteristics of being where they shouldn't be, of being affected by some invisible force. As Brown and Batogen noted, the likelihood of this happening by chance was 0.007%. The only explanation they could come up with? The TNOs were being affected by Leverrier's missing planet. Rather than name it Planet X, they dubbed this hypothetical world Planet 9 to reflect Pluto's 2006 downgrade. The more they worked on it, the more evidence seemed to stack up. Come 2020, 13 more TNOs had been discovered, all showing similar weird effects. At the same time, though, Planet 9 itself remained hidden, only visible by a careful reading of the data, like how a hunter can sense when an animal has passed through a clearing. Since you're watching this in a world in which NASA hasn't announced the discovery of a new planet, you're obviously aware that the search still continues, that Planet 9 still hasn't shown up. But that doesn't mean we don't already have a lot of theories about what it must look like. In 1515, the printmaker Albrecht Dürer sat down to carve an image of a rhinoceros. The only problem? Dürer had never seen a rhino before, if not even seen a painting. All he had to go on was a written description. The result is a fascinating creature that's both impressively like and also somehow completely unlike a real-life rhino. We mention this because we're about to do for Planet Nine what Dürer did for rhinos. With no sightings, there's no way we can tell what the heck it actually looks like. But we can sketch you a picture from estimates and assumptions made by serious astronomers. While some of it will inevitably turn out to be wrong, hopefully it'll be right enough so that you can at least get some idea of what this giant space rhinoceros is like. The first thing to say about Planet 9 is that if it exists, it's going to be really big and really cold. Its closest point to the Sun may be as distant as 300 AU away, 10 times Neptune's average distance. So far away that our Sun would appear from its surface just a dot, another faint star in the darkness. That means a freezing world, one that probably looks like Uranus, an ice giant with a solid core. It also means a world that shouldn't exist. For a giant planet to form so far out, everything we know about the formation of our solar system would have to be wrong. That leaves two options for how Planet Nine came to be, presuming it exists. The first is the simplest. Our sun stole it. It's not unheard of for planets to be torn from their home system, sometimes hurled off into interstellar space, sometimes taken into a different system. If Planet Nine originated with another star, that might explain what it's doing so far away from all the other planets. The second option is that it really did form alongside Neptune and Uranus, but then something sent it spinning out to where it is now. The chief culprit would be Jupiter, a monster capable of disrupting the orbit of even something as big as Planet Nine, hurling it out to the fringes of the solar system. But there's another option, one that's perhaps even stranger than the idea of a world five times bigger than Earth that we've never seen. What if Planet Nine isn't a planet at all, but a black hole? The reason some astronomers are convinced that Planet Nine must exist is because of its gravitational effect on multiple TNOs. But planets aren't the only things that could do this. In 2020, a new paper argued that a better candidate might be a primordial black hole. In the first second after the Big Bang, our universe was a dense burning haze of matter and energy with wildly uneven distribution. In fact, it was so uneven that scientists think some regions became dense enough to form tiny black holes. Unlike stellar black holes, which usually have a minimum mass of three times our sun, or supermassive black holes, those star-devouring monsters at the center of galaxies, such primordial black holes would be relatively small. Instead of the mass of a big star, they might have the mass of a planet. That means one could exert all the gravitational pull of a ninth planet while only being the size of a golf ball. Unfortunately, this would make it almost impossible to find. Nothing can escape black holes, not even light. Normally we observe them by measuring the effects they have on nearby stars, but with a primordial black hole being so small, even that method won't work. Crazy as the idea of a tiny black hole on the edges of our solar system might be, though, there's one more, potentially even weirder theory. What if there's nothing there at all? If the history of the hunt for Planet X has taught us anything, it's that it always ends in disappointment. Even the one great find, the multi-decade search uncovered, Pluto, turned out to be a total fluke. And now a 2021 paper is casting doubt on Planet Nine's very existence. Carried out by PhD student Kevin Napier at the University of Michigan, the study looked at TNOs not identified by Mike Brown in 2016 as having eccentric orbits. Basically, the evidence for a hidden planet lies entirely on the idea that Sedna and others like it are behaving weirdly, exhibiting orbits no TNOs should have. If Brown was right about Planet Nine, then most other TNOs should have uniform positions. 
But that's not what Napier found. Instead, he found TNOs in other parts of the night sky behaving oddly in places a hypothetical Planet 9 shouldn't be able to affect them. In other words, there's now a distinct possibility that Planet 9 is Vulcan all over again. Live long and prosper. A mirage in space conjured to fix a problem that never even existed. For their part, Brown and Batigin are adamant their observations are correct, and they'll soon be able to say for absolute sure. In 2023, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile will begin regular observations. A next generation telescope, the Vera C. Rubin, is to existing observatories what the Hubble telescope is to a kid holding a cardboard tube to their eye. Capable of photographing the entire night sky in less than a week, it will produce 20 terabytes of data every night. That means scientists will soon have access to information they could have only dreamed of. Information about our night sky that could rewrite everything we know. If Planet 9 is really out there, the Vera C. Rubin telescope will almost certainly find it. But even if it isn't, even if it turns out that a planet existing beyond Neptune was just some fever dream Leverrier had that we've never quite been able to shake, that won't mean all this conjecture has been in vain. As we said at the start, this video is both about the possibly real Planet X and the theory behind it. The idea that something out there might be worth finding and the real breakthroughs this idea led to. Already we've seen how the hunt for Vulcan helped prove Einstein's theories, seen how Planet X spurred the discovery of Pluto. And now the search for Planet 9 is unleashing even more discoveries. Since Mike Brown first suggested it, a team of astronomers comprising Chad Trujillo, Scott Shepard, and David Tholen has been spearheading the look for the new planet. In that time, they've discovered the dwarf planets, the Goblin and Far Out, each orbiting at over 80 AU from the Sun. They found the most distant trans-Neptunian object ever sighted, the cheekily named Far Far Out, a staggering 132 AU away. They've accidentally detected 12 new moons around Jupiter and 20 new moons orbiting Saturn. And that's just this one team. Who knows how many other awesome things are being discovered by astronomers on the lookout for our missing planet. The story of Planet X, then, may turn out to be a story of humankind chasing a hopeless dream. But it's also the story of what amazing things can be accomplished in that process, of the real breakthroughs that occur when we look to the stars and wonder to ourselves, what if? Whether it turns out to be real or not, there's no doubt that Planet X has already altered our understanding of the solar system in ways we could never possibly have imagined. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, please do check out our fantastic sponsor for this episode, Squarespace, linking them below. And thank you for watching.